The date was December 23rd, and I received life-altering news from my doctor. He said I had thyroid cancer. Hi, my name is Renee Ornelas. This is my wife. I'm Lexi. We live in Houston. We have three beautiful kids, Alex, Nayla, and Joel, and Ellie. We've been together for 14 years. I'm a professional saxophone player, and I'm also a professional firefighter. I've been in my firefighter career about 10 years now. Uh, eight of those years I spent at a particular station, Station 77. And there was a point in my life where I just realized I needed to change and to be closer to home, be closer to my family, my wife, my kids. So I decided to put in for a transfer. I received a call from a chief before I even went to that district. And he says, hey, we just received all this funding from a company nearby that wants to invest in firefighters that are in their district. So besides the yearly blood work and things that we normally do, this test is a life scan and it was gonna go a little bit deeper because of some of the things that we're prone to in our profession. Right before I get to that district, I decided to sign up and I'm glad I did. Just a few weeks before going there, I had done previous blood work and everything came back fine. But when I decided to do this life scan, what made it different is they do an ultrasound of your whole entire body. And during that time, when they started doing the ultrasound of my neck, they found out that there was a nodule in my thyroid. First, I didn't think of anything of it. They described it as a nodule being as a mole on your skin. So immediately I just brushed it off and thought everything was normal. Didn't, didn't think twice about it. By this point, I'm already at the station, had the family over to the fire station and my niece, we're, you know, we're joking around and she, she pushes me down. I actually kind of hurt my knee and the pain lasted a little bit to where it ended up leading me to go back to my doctor. During that point, I brought it up and asked if I could revisit the whole thing about the nodule in my thyroid. So she does, she sends me to go get another ultrasound and they find out, all right, yeah, you do have a nodule. What's different from the other nodules is this one is calcified. And the best way to describe it is, it's like the outer shell of an egg. It, it, it has a little more, it's, it's a harder texture. It isn't, it isn't as soft or, or anything that wouldn't be alarming. So she has me do a biopsy. Once things progress and you get a biopsy, you start to get a little nervous. I ended up getting a call from my doctor saying that the biopsy came back positive for papillary carcinoma, which is thyroid cancer. It's crazy how it makes you. Mm -hmm. That moment changed my life because the thoughts that ran through my head were all negative. The first thing you think is, first thing I thought is I wanna be here for my wife and my kids. You think death, you think the worst. And it was a pretty devastating moment in my life. I was at a crossroad. I knew I had to make a choice. When somebody hears the word cancer, they automatically think negativity, death, all those things. And I realized that this is where the rubber meets the road, where I really had to allow my faith to kick in. I knew I needed to be in a more positive space in my life. And I think that's when things started to transition for me. I remember coming home one day and just crying out to God, asking him that I needed his help 
to get through this whole situation. I knew that at that point I had to fight. And my why is I want to be around for my wife and my kids. And I wanted to put this way behind me. Surgery was all scheduled by that point. And I was just clinging on. I knew I had, I knew there was something more. I knew that wasn't the end. I knew that I had to allow my faith to just take over. So I remember making one more appointment with, with a surgeon just days before the actual surgery. And he kind of had a surprised look on his face. Like, what are you doing here? Surgery's in a few days. I said, I have a few more questions and I need to know if there's other options. And during this time, I had been really seeking God and I felt that, that God was doing something and, and I knew that if I allowed God to just really come into this situation, that he could heal me. Initially, the doctor said, we're gonna take your whole thyroid out. And there's a lot of side effects that come with that and how your life is gonna change. And something told me that it wasn't over. In that appointment with the doctor, he pulls the ultrasound back up and he looks at my, my entire thyroid and goes, you know what? The other side looks really good. I normally don't offer this to a lot of my patients, but we can just take half and the body should respond and compensate for the other side. Immediately, my thoughts went to, this is a breakthrough. This is something that I've been hoping for. This was the pivotal moment. And through my rationale, <laughs> I thought, oh, we have two eyes, we have two ears, we have two lungs. This is God's way of still allowing the body to heal and do what it's supposed to do. And I asked the doctor, do I have to give you a decision now? He said, no, I'll tell you what. Wait till the day of the surgery. And right before we roll you back there, tell me what you want to do. During that time, must have been about four or five days out. I really started seeking God and believing for that healing. And the day of the surgery, I move forward and I say, all right, I'm going to do half. And the moment I said that I knew that that was me taking that first step towards believing that God was going to do the rest, knowing that where I was weak, God was strong and made me whole. And I couldn't have gone through any of that without the support of my wife. I feel so fortunate to have her in my life and to have her by my side, that I get to share life with her and do life with her and we don't have to do it alone. The day that I found out my husband had cancer was the most emotional day of my life. No wife wants to hear that there's something wrong with her husband. I know the thoughts that ran through my mind initially were, I can't lose my best friend. I can't lose the father to my kids and the person that I'm supposed to spend the rest of my life with. And those are tough moments. They're tough moments when you feel just as weak as he does. But I knew that I had to look to God for strength and be the strength that my husband needed me to be. I knew that whatever I felt he felt a thousand times worse than I did. So I put my feelings and my emotions aside and I told him that we were in it together. There was nothing 
that he would go through on this journey alone. I would be there, I would pray over him, I would speak into him. I know thoughts are such a hard thing to control when you're going through something like that. But I'm so grateful that we were able to walk through this journey together. So fast forward, post-surgery, I remember the doctor saying when I gave him my decision, I'm gonna go with half before being put under anesthesia or anything. I remember him saying, good choice. Whether it was just a figure of speech for him or not, that did bring comfort. And it was a lot of confirmation to what I was hoping for and ultimately where I wanted to end up. That I, I did believe that I could receive healing from this and not have to remove my entire thyroid. Weeks after surgery, I was waiting on the pathology. It was just taking forever. Of course, I, you know, I wanna go back to being a nervous wreck, but I, I decided to stay positive and know that my healing had already happened. Being in a state of gratitude and thankfulness and knowing that if I just would remain during that and believe that God had already done it, it was done. I remember a certain point where I felt something inside that's, that I felt like, only, like God spoke to me and said, stop asking me for your healing and start thanking me for it. It's already done. I ended up hearing from the pathology and the exact quote from the doctor, the margins were close, but we got it all. No further interventions. Our intent for putting this video together is just really to encourage. Even when you're going through the most difficult situation in your life, it's so important to surround yourself with positivity. I think the biggest takeaway from this whole situation for both of us was that crossroads, that pivotal moment. Even though things seem so natural to just go dark and think of the most horrible situations, at that point we both made a decision that we were gonna change the words that we were speaking. Not speaking circumstances, but speaking the things that we were expecting. I was expecting healings, I was expecting better things to come. And I think the healing and this positive outcome was honestly a side effect of what God did in our entire lives. Not only was did we receive the news that we wanted to receive about my healing, being free of cancer, but our marriage is better than it's ever been, our relationship with our kids. And when you take the time and you reflect and look at the things that were just could have been the most horrible situations are really contrast and makes the life we're living now even that much more beautiful. So I encourage you to be impeccable with your words. Use your words to edify people and not tear people down. Speak what you want in your life and not your circumstances because words can be self-fulfilling prophecies. Let's choose the right ones for what we want to see ourselves in the future.